Hello and welcome back to another episode of Alpha Studies. Truly I am thrilled to be speaking with you all again. I am grateful for such a warm reception of this podcast. Once again, I'm your host Dr. Eden Curtis. Today we are going to be discussing the topic of Darcy and Liam Gallows. The name Gallows should be familiar to you dear listener. Liam Gallows, even to this day, is still a fairly popular songwriter, and many of his works have received covers over the years. Most recently the singer known as Adler Bird sang one during his concert in Marble Gardens just last week. Because this is a show about alpha women's history, we'd be remiss if we failed to speak about Liam and Darcy. The two are both the subject today because out of all their accomplishments, They were most known for how much they loved one another. But before I get too ahead of myself, I would like to introduce a dear friend of mine. Mrs. Casey Blair, she will be joining us today for this episode. Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be here. Casey can you please take a moment to discuss your qualifications to be on the show? Of course. Once again, my name is Casey Blair, I'm the owner of the Blair's bookstore chain. I have a master's in English with a focus on literature. My master's dissertation was on Liam Gallo's work's effects on destigmatizing alpha women. I'm also one of the top three collectors of Liam Gallo's work in the country. And who's the delightful little lady next to you in the carrier? Well that's my daughter Claudia, Lucas, my husband, wasn't feeling well today so I decided to take her with me. I hope that's okay. Of course. It's always a delight to have such a sweet baby in the studio. We'll see how sweet she is when she wakes up from her nap. I suppose we shouldn't waste any time then. Casey, can you give us a brief history of Liam and Darcy Gallows for those who might not be familiar? Sure, and would you like me to spin two plates on some sticks as well? As amusing as your party tricks are Casey, I think it's better to just discuss things for now. Of course, how could I be so ridiculous? Well, I'm glad you're beginning to see reason. So I'll try to summarize as much as possible. Though it'll be difficult, thank you again Eden. You're quite welcome Casey. Are you going to continue? Darcy Gallows was born in what is now present-day New Nephrite which is a city located to the southeast of the New Kingdom. Records from the local church are sparse due to a fire that happened during Darcy's lifetime so her exact birthdate is unknown. But there are admission records into the local boarding house for wayward girls for Darcy around 1862 giving us the approximate birth year of 1849 assuming that at the time Darcy was 13. I I would like to take a brief aside to speak about why the records were so sparse for historians. Some of our listeners may not be aware of how alpha women were historically treated. All right then, go ahead. Thank you. Now dear listeners, as some of you may be aware alpha women weren't exactly treated fairly historically. Just barely did alpha women receive the right to vote before Omega men by just a couple of years in the States. Back during Darcy's lifetime, the prejudices that a woman like her could face was intense. Many women often died before reaching the age of 30 due to superstitions, murderous rivals, and so-called workplace accidents. It was common whenever young girls began to present as alphas they would be sent to the local church. Or, as in Darcy's case, the boarding house for wayward girls. The atrocities that often took place in these sorts of establishments are numerous, and frankly deserving of their own discussion. But to summarize, it was very common for young girls to be abused in these homes. While the church has yet to formally address these kinds of abuses, there have been several lawsuits over the decades that ruled in favor of the survivors of these homes, possibly in an effort to cover their tracks or even the family of the girl's shame. Many young women went undocumented or underdocumented. There are countless names and faces of these women 
that were forgotten to time thanks to this practice. I'd like to elaborate on what you mean by shame. By all means go ahead. Back then it was often considered shameful to have an otherwise perfectly good daughter present as an alpha woman. For many villages there was a belief that witchcraft or infidelity was something the birth giver of the child was involved with and the child's presentation was proof of that. It was, sadly, common for both the child and the birth giver to end up losing their lives over this. More common still was families trying to rid themselves of the child after their presentation. To the point that many alpha women often adopted names based on how their families tried to get rid of them. That's correct, my last name Blair actually comes from my great-great-great-grandmother's experience. She took it on in reference to the house fire that her family set in order to make it seem like her passing was an accident. My deepest apologies that your grandmother had to experience that Casey. It's quite all right, she outlived them all. Ended up living to be over a hundred. How impressive. Indeed. Nevertheless based on this trend we can very well assume how Darcy's family had attempted to off her with a last name like Gallows. Yes. Hangings were quite popular. To the point that one of the young women that Darcy grew up with Sloane Myers published a poem about them. I believe it was called The Fair Dancers of Greenwood. You're absolutely right, however, a bit of a correction. Captain Sloane Myers was not just someone Darcy grew up with. Those two are noted for being incredibly close throughout their entire lives. Even after Darcy retired, Captain Myers visited the gallows home often. I see. I wasn't actually aware of that. See Casey this is exactly why I asked you to be on the show. Yes, you certainly should be grateful that I'm taking the time to discuss this with you. Oh yes, letting you talk about your two favorite people in history. Clearly I'm a very cruel friend. Clearly. Oh it seems we better get a move on, Claudia's starting to wake. Of course, let's move on to Liam. Sure, Liam's life is actually far better documented than Darcy's due to his autobiographical novels. Many taking their first literature classes in college are most likely reading one of the many novels Liam wrote. The Rose of Malachite. According to Liam's own account, his life in the beginning was perhaps just as rough as Darcy's. A sadly common theme for many Omegas during that time. They were often treated as property, and were not considered to be their own persons. Dowry payments back then often came with a bill of sale which was often provided by the bride and bridegroom's families then. Liam was no different in this, his father was a gambler and before Liam even presented as an Omega. He had been shopping around to different stores to sell him to. A common practice back then whenever poor parents had conventionally attractive children. Thankfully there had been a recent law passed in Malachite Port not allowing the sale of children until that child had presented. But that only put things off by a few more years. It was the same night that Liam presented that he was sold off to the flower shop. While we only have portraits of Liam painted by others, it's noted in several accounts how beautiful Liam was. Darcy, after she learnt how to read and write in her later years, wrote in her own journal about how beautiful Liam was. There are pages upon pages of detailed descriptions of Liam's appearance written by Darcy. There were also several attempts at poetry but. Darcy was clearly dissatisfied with the results because they were X'd out. Something that I'm sure Liam would have loved anyway. Oh that much is for certain Eden. When Liam met the king and queen of the new kingdom, it was documented that Liam went on an extensive rant about how great his beloved Darcy was. Something that is noted to cause Darcy great embarrassment, the painter that had been hired for that day in court actually took the time to paint Darcy's face pink providing further documentation on how flustered Liam's words had made her. Oh I've seen that painting. I love that the painter actually took the time to add a little smile on her lips. It's quite sweet. It certainly is. Oh Eden I'm terribly sorry. It's fine Casey. I can finish this out. You go take care of her. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Thank you for having me.
Come on now, sweetheart. Let's get you taken care of. In conclusion, Darcy and Liam both had incredibly difficult lives before meeting each other. Darcy actually met Liam when he was working at the flower shop. It's noted that in an account documented by Darcy herself, she had mistakenly walked into the shop thinking it actually sold flowers. She stated in her own journals that she was far too flustered to simply leave, especially after seeing someone like Liam there. Darcy wrote that she hadn't intended on doing anything with Liam at first. She just wanted to visit to look at him sometimes. It was actually Liam who approached Darcy first, this eventually led to the beginnings of their romance. Darcy documented that when she had bought what would, later on, be their family home, she had bought it so Liam would have a safe place to stay while she was gone. She had in her own words, only hoped to help a friend and did not imagine that he loved her so much. While Darcy's work as the first mate of the Rosemary set the standard for many modern accounting practices, and Liam's work as an artist and author helped humanize women like his beloved wife. I, personally, find it fitting that they are best remembered for their adoration and love for each other. Their influence has inspired many artists and writers over the years. Famous songwriter Sawyer Kennedy was once quoted in saying, My heart aches to know that I shall never meet a man who looks at me like Liam did Darcy. Liam once noted in his journals that he hoped that one day he should love Darcy as largely as she loved him. I'd like to venture out and say that he was successful because of his love. Their love truly changed the world. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. See you next time.